Hello everyone and welcome to what seems to be the last presentation of HashiTalks 2022. I'm really happy you decided to stay around and I certainly hope you find it worth your time and I hope you take away something interesting, maybe something useful from our, my talk. Let me start by saying something maybe controversial. Running microservices, functions, the right way is hard. Now, what do I mean by the right way? The code itself does not have to be complicated to be, well, effective. Rather, the tooling that supports AWS Lambdas is what we believe is still not quite there. The common practice seems to be to abstract the complexity through a framework, but that represents problems in itself as it and the infrastructure are much harder to decouple and control individually. Adding further complexity with versioning, deploying general tooling around functions. You know those lambdas you have running right now? What version of the coil is deployed? How do you deploy? What's the update and crucially, what's the rollback strategy? While we certainly want enablement from our developers, in fact, we encourage it, we don't want production taken down because of a failed deploy. We can do better. My name is Ivan and thank you for joining me today. We will go through how we decided to run functions at Bloom and Wild. Bloom and Wild is one of the biggest flower delivery companies in the UK and in some parts of Europe, like the Netherlands and Germany. It is also a technology first company. Bloom and Wild is reinventing the 60 billion global flower industry with over a billion flower exchanges taking place every year and industry satisfaction levels are low. Driven by our core belief that you can never care too much or be too thoughtful or we do things a little differently. There are around 70 people in the technology team, which forms a significant part of the overall Blumenwald team of over 400 people. The technology team consists of an engineering team, platform operations and architectural teams. Engineering is organized into teams of cross-functional squads each responsible for a business and architectural domain. Together with product design and data teams, we enable the success of the entire business by developing digital products best fit for the needs of our customers and our internal users. We use a diverse set of tools and a diverse set of technologies across the entire stack. We're always trying to pick the right solution for the job. Our website is built on AngularJS, and we also offer two native mobile apps for iOS and Android users. These experiences are running on top of Ruby on Rails e-commerce backend and are supported by a number of industry standard software as a service product uh, products like Contentful CMS and Brace CRM. We're also responsible for our OpStack software, which is mostly built on Ruby on Rails and Python. It's enabling both in-house operations and third-party fulfillment with our partners. Our software is hosted on AWS Cloud. There's an ever-increasing demand for functions and services that run on demand, and it was up to the platform team to deliver a good solution that would fit. We took the current offering and the tooling around it, doing various spikes of, um, of most tools out there, the serverless framework and code deploy to mention a few, and none of them quite fit the bill. You see, we have tooling in place to handle our infrastructure, Terraform. For instance, 
we know that if we want to deploy a Docker Lambda, we need an ECR that will host our image. What we absolutely do not want is a framework spinning up infrastructure for us or having CloudFormation beside our Terraform infrastructure as code repo. The idea was to decouple the infrastructure from the function code. Now, I promise to show you some code. I really do. But first, I think we need to have a look at the flow. We have a GitHub repo. Anyone can submit a pull request with a new service along with some, with some tags. When the PR gets approved, Terraform Cloud will provide essentially two things. It will provision the required infrastructure to run a set function, and it will create a GitHub repo from a template. The infrastructure bit is everything you need to trigger and run the function as such uh, is a Hello World Ruby Lambda. The GitHub repo will create the same Hello World Lambda function, as well as put in place some GitHub action files a Docker file, a create a readme with a set of instructions on how to deploy code. In honesty, it's as easy as renaming a file, pushing code to the repo. Okay, so code is pushed, the GitHub action is run, and your Lambda is deployed. Pretty cool, eh? For our logging and monitoring solution, we use Datadog. Because we, are, because we are very, very, very particular on following Datadog's observability's best practices, we get the observability into Lambdas essentially for free. The newly curated services are available from a drop-down menu in a dashboard we've created. Now, the demo. Uh, remember the uh, repo I told you about? Yeah, so that contains a services TF file, which I am now modifying using Vim, of course. You will excuse my fat fingers here. Um, what I'm doing is I am defining a module, um, and the module name is the service that I want to use. Now, um, because we are particular about the best practices from Datadog, we're also tagging this. Um, and that's gonna help down the line when we once we get data ingested into the platform. Right, so doing a save and quit here. I'm going to run a little trick with Terraform formatting because I want it to be nice and pretty. Um, and what I'll do now is I will push the file to GitHub, create a pull request. Um, and yes, for the purposes of the demo, I am going to approve my own request. But that would happen something from a platform team, right? Uh, you can see the build has kicked off. Um, that is um, Terraform Cloud using services bootstrap will now create the infrastructure for me. It's going to create stuff like the ECR and the GitHub repository. Um, just like we mentioned before, right? Uh, going in the GitHub repository, I already see I have a Hashi 2022 repo created a couple of seconds ago. Um, the keen of you would out there noticed a little X, which means the build failed, uh, but we'll fix that in just a second. Um, as discussed, we have uh, a nicely laid out readme file for developers, um, how to you know, further expand the project how to get uh, their functions configured, how to push stuff, where is stuff located. Um, and we're using hot linking for this. 
So they don't go around searching or anything. They just click on a button and it's there, right? Um, now, what I've done here, I, in case you didn't know, if you press dot, it's going to open the web editor for you. Um, going back to the flow, um, I did mention that it's as easy as renaming a couple of files. Well, the files are in the dot github folder. As you can see, I'm renaming main example to main, pull request example to pull request. That is because um, we can do that automatically for you. Um, once these files have been re like renamed, the syntax will change, as you can see. But also, like there's some Jinja templating there that's going to automatically inject the proper data for you. Um, because we're running a Docker-based Lambda, I just wanted to show you like the Docker file we include. Um, the developer doesn't have to write this stuff in. It's already presented for him. Now, what I'm doing here is I am pushing the changes um, into my repo that will include the GitHub Actions. That is um, what's going to happen when I push changes to the Hashi 2020 repo, right? Um, on a separate note, our staging Hashi 2020 Hello World example Lambda has been created. Now, I'm executing them a bunch of times because it takes roughly 10 minutes for uh, logs and matrices to get uh, injected into Datadog. Now, this is the dashboard that we've created. And yes, it is a slight work in uh, progress, but we do see invocations. We do see the duration of the functions and uh, like the, how, how much memory we've used and the application logs. Um, and there shouldn't be any errors because we didn't create any errors. Doing it this way, we are future-proofing ourselves. Not only have we decoupled the infrastructure code from the application code, but we can do further expansion. For instance, if we have a need for a long for a long lift service and not just a function, we can do a slight modification and it could provide a drop spec file, a task definition, Kubernetes deploy definition, or all of them. To quote Kelsey Hightower, I think that's pretty dope. I'd like to point out that this would not have been possible without an amazing team around me that I have the privilege and honor of working with. You guys are crushing it. Like all software projects, this is an ongoing thing and as such is still very much a work in progress. It's not quite ready for prime time. But we're getting there. We really care about creating a diverse and inclusive team. So we welcome people from all backgrounds with different perspectives, ideas, and experiences to work with us. In our team, everyone has the freedom to give their opinion, grow their career, and be part of a genuinely caring and inclusive team. If you feel like we would be a good fit, please reach out. The socials are displayed on screen as well as the company's website. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.